What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for another episode of Unpopular Opinions, episode six. And let's get straight into it with Nippon Gupta saying, Unpopular Opinion, Roden is our second best centre back. Yeah. Do you know what? I was actually thinking this. I might come in with a t-shirt, free Roden. Because you know? <laughs> I feel as though he's not getting you know, much of a chance. I don't think he's looked dreadful, has he? It's not like Doherty where he's looked dreadful, but he keeps getting you know, back into the team. I feel as though he's being really ostracised. He's being really uh, shoved out, isn't he, for some reason? I agree. I think that um, last season he was getting his chance under Mourinho and he was playing really well. Yeah. And then as soon as Mason came in, we never saw him again. Uh, had a brilliant Euros uh, for Wales and we haven't seen him this season, albeit he has been injured this season. But I think to say he's our second best centre-back, you can't say it because we haven't seen him enough. Well, you. I mean, you could. I mean, who who do you think who do you think's ahead? Of you Roden. think dies ahead of Roden? Um, it's hard to say, but I think as it stands, you've got to say Dyer and Sanchez are probably both the better centre back than Roden. I think. I'm so. not sure about that actually. You know, I th I, I, can't I think say it's, otherwise. Because, do you know what? We just of, haven't seen enough of him. That's, that's what all I'm it saying. is. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I can't right. say otherwise because yeah. I haven't seen enough of him. I think once he gets into the team and he gets a string of games, I think he might even bed his place down yeah, and I, I think don't. you'll then say that he's much better than, but I, we don't know at the moment do I we? I don't disagree with that yeah. but as it but, stands I just can't say he's better. Yeah of course yeah you can't say it because we don't know we, yeah. we haven't seen enough yeah. So it could be the case. It could be. It could be yeah. but you just can't say it. I, I, I've got a feeling it will be. Maybe. I I've hope got you're a right. feeling it will be by I the end so. of the season. I yeah hope I hope so. so as well. All right let's move on. All right so this one is from Andreas Nagard Nielsen. I think that's a Danish. Are you from any related, Denmark? Any yeah. Any <laughs> relation to Alan? <laughs> yeah. Um, Troy Parrott will be sold this season or next summer. Um, ben? Um, Troy Parrott's an interesting one because last season uh, he went out on loan, didn't do well at all, um, went out on two loans and really didn't do well. Um, Jose Mourinho at Spurs did seem to fancy him and did think there was a player in there. Um, <laughs> but... On, on the back of these bad loan spells, he's gone out on loan back this year. He's gone to MK Dons. He's scored in his first two games out of three uh, so far. So I think there is a player in there. He's already getting called up to Ireland to every single mm. uh, squad, their senior squad. So uh, they clearly rate him. And I think that when you compare him to someone like Dane Scarlett, Dane Scarlett has showed a lot more uh, than Tro Troy Parrott mm -hmm. in a Spurs shirt. But I don't think he'll be sold this or next summer. I think they're going to bide their time with Troy Parrott. I think they think there is a player in there and they're going to try and, um, you know, be patient with him. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think they will. I think they might offload him next summer. Him. Yeah, I think they might. Yeah. Which, you know, it's a, it, it's a, it's a shame, but I just don't see... I, don't, I just don't see the same kind of level of um, belief in him as they do in Dane Scarlett, for instance. But I think they might be looking at it at the same ilk as like Harry Kane, for instance, where he took a bit of time. He took quite a lot of loan spells to to get going. And then when he came back to Tottenham, they still didn't think he was going to make it. And then he got his chance mm. and then he hit the yeah, ground maybe running. It could be, yeah, I guess um, so. They, Troy they... Parrott, you know, players kind of develop at different stages of their career. Mm. Harry Kane was a bit of a late bloomer. Mm. Troy Parrott could be the same, so I think they might just bide their time with him uh, to see if he's I hope a late they do. Boomer. I hope they do, and we, we you know, get, he gets given a bit of a chance. But um, I don't know, just intuition. I just think they might um, let him go. All right, yeah. let's move on. I want to know your opinions on um, Troy Parrott as we move over to the next one. Is Felix Hoibai, and he's saying Tanganga is not a Premier League level right back for a top ten Ooh. team. Felix, Felix, Felix. Come on, John. That's harsh, man. That's harsh. I think. I think he's. I think when he's coming, he's looked good. You know, um, I think he's shown that he can play against the top teams. He played well against City. Dealt with, you know, Sterling and Grealish. Um, mm -hmm. Kept them in the in his back pocket. I think. I, I think it's harsh. I mean, there's an argument to say maybe top four, maybe a stretch to say top six, but to say for a top ten team. I think that's just, that's too much of a stretch. Yeah, I completely agree. And when you, you don't put performances like that against Manchester City, um, if you're not a top 10, at least top yeah. 10 uh, level right back, I, I completely disagree with that. I think that, I don't think he is a natural right back. That That's what I do think. But I think that mm. he will get, he will definitely get into some of the teams in the top 10 in right back. Of course. I think yeah. he definitely will. And he's still only 22, isn't he? Yeah. So he's still a very young player. Uh, you know, he, when he came through, he looked big and strong and he was only like 20, 21. So I think he hasn't really had that many games either. And like mm. when he's played, he's looked good. You know, his man of the match first game he ever played, I think, on his debut. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's man of the match against City. And he really hasn't had... Uh, how many games has he actually had, Tanganga, if you put them all together? Not many at all. Not many at all. Are we talking like 10, 20? Probably 
20 max. 20? Max. He's only played like 20 games and like yeah. we're demanding so much for yeah. from a 22 year old. It's crazy. Yeah. I think it's very, very harsh. That. Yeah, I do. Very harsh. But, but thank you for the unpopular opinion, Felix. That's what we want to see on these. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see unpopular, not deluded. Yeah, okay. Let's move right. on. <laughs> well, uh, it depends how you uh, judge them. <laughs> Go on, let's move on. All right, your turn. Uh, Kiri Evangelou saying, Carl Walker Peters is a better all round right back than any of our current players in that position. Ooh. I can't, I can't back that one. Can't back that one. I oh, think, first of all, Serge Aurier is a better right back. Yeah, Serge Aurier is <laughs> right gone. now. Yeah. Um, Jaffet Tanganga. Is a better defender than... Um, he's a better defender, Walker not better Peters. going forward. Yeah. Um, Emerson. We don't know, really. We don't know, but I don't... I, like, we hope Barcelona that, wouldn't yeah. be signing Kyle Walker-Peters, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I do think Walker-Peters was very good um, in home games, especially when we were dominating the, dominating like the ball. He looked game, excellent. There were, there were certain games where I thought he was actually man of the match, you know. Mm. Um, but he just comes unstuck when he's uh, on the back foot, especially against teams that like are, are pressing us. I think he looked a little bit lightweight. Um, but yeah, he, what, he he is a good player. He's he's definitely a good player. But whether or not he's good good enough for like the top level, I don't I don't think he is. I think he's at the right sort of club for his uh, his level of development. Yeah, and to say he's better all round right back than any of the players we have there, can't see it. No, I can't see it. All right, Kiri, thank you for the unpopular <laughs> opinion. <laughs> That's a good one. Go on. Who's all right, so well, who have we got next? All right, so this one's from Joe McGuinness, um, who I see in the comments section a lot. A lot. How are you doing, Joe? Um, Adam Ad, Adama Traore would have brought us to the Premier League glory this season. His ability to cross the ball to Kane and cut back to Sun would easily bag us four or five goals a game. We need him in January. <laughs> yeah, I see a little. I see a little bit of tongue in cheek in this one. <laughs> um, but uh, what I would say about that is that I think Adama Traore could have potentially catapulted us to the top four question. I don't think Premier League titles, obviously, are, are way too much of a stretch, but I think maybe yeah. in the conversation for top four, not even definitely in the top four. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he has a very unique um, physique. Uh, he, he's, he's like an athlete, he's like a rugby league player. Um, his end product is a little bit suspect, but I still think that he could have added a different dimension, especially if games... You know, we're getting a little bit stuck with the teams that play a low block or, I don't know, we're just struggling to sort of really break teams down. He might have added a little bit of an injection of something, uh, even as an impact sub that we, we could have done with. But um, yeah, I like the I like the optics in there. <laughs> he could have got us the uh, you know got us up to like the top four bags, four or five goals a game. It's a little bit of a stretch, mate. But um, but yeah, he I think he would have been a good addition personally. Yeah, I completely agree, and I think that yes, his end product um, of shooting isn't great, but I think mm. his end product of crossing is is pretty good. Uh, yeah. To be fair, I really believe that, and I think that um, he was getting good deliveries in the box against Spurs. Um, he was completely roasting Tanganga wasn't he on on our right hand side of the pitch and I think that if, yeah. if he was if we had a front three of Kane up top Sonny mm. on the left and Adama on the right how much mm. space would that free up for Sonny and Kane just because mm. for the sheer nature of what Adama is you need to put two free men on him yeah you I know to. and we, we were actually doubling up on him I don't know if you noticed we but did, yeah. during that game we were doubling up on him. it shows that teams are frightened of him mm -hmm. and I think just the way he plays, teams would, um, you know, they would, they'd put the shits up them, basically. Exactly. So I think from that perspective, he would be a, a great addition to the team. And I think he doesn't need to always have, like, the perfect cross. He can kind of do what Lennon used to do, which, like, mm. get to the byline and then, like, do a pullback, a cutback uh, pass, you know, which I think he's more than capable of doing. So I think he could have been a, a weapon for us, yeah. Do you think I this think, is it though? Do you think this is like our last chance to, to get him? Or no, do you think, I think do you we think... will get him one at some yeah. stage, maybe next summer, something yeah. like that. I do think we might get this one over there. How old is he Nuno now? really likes him. Traore, he's not yeah. that old. I think 26? Something like that. Let me just quickly look. Um, he's 25. 25. Okay, yeah. So, so now's the time to age, get him. You know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, let's yep. move Thanks on. Thanks for that, Joe. Uh, this one's from Sergeant Sunny. Uh, Tangi, Lo Celso and Bergwijn stepping up for us will be the difference between top six and top yeah. four. And I completely agree with that. Completely agree with that. If they uh, really step up, then, you know, we that's it's like, th you know, three new players, you could say. I know yeah. I always say that, but like, we're not, it's always got to the point where we're not expecting anything from Lo Celso and, Ta and Tangi anymore because mm. they're sort of always on the, always on the outskirts of the team. Yeah. But if, imagine if they did step up, what that could do. That's what frustrates us most about these players because you can see that they've got the sheer talent in them. You yeah. can see they've got top, top quality talent in them. And for them not to show it on a regular basis, that's why we get so angry and yeah. so upset with them. 
It's just also the fact that Lo Celso keeps getting injured and Tangi mm. keeps like coming in and out of the side and his yeah. attitude doesn't seem to always be right. But And then Bergwijn, you think, wow, there's a player, there's a player there. And then it's just like the, the lack of end product. It's like, it is a little bit frustrating, isn't it? Especially when you can see how much they've got, mm. you know. Yeah, um, very but yeah, true. I agree with that. I don't and think especially that's that Tangi, Especially Tangi out of those three. Yeah, of course. Because I think Tangi can be literally the best player in his position in the world. Yeah. With the ability yeah, yeah. he has. We, all, we can all see it. And that's the thing. We can all see it. Um, it's just whether or not he can, you know, get the attitude right and really want to be there mm. and, and, you know, really work hard off the ball, which I thought he was doing last season. I thought he was pretty good off the ball last season. And if we can get him really wanting it, then I think it's, it's a huge, a huge, uh, you know, player for us. Yeah. All right. That is episode six. Uh, episode seven will be with you very soon. Thank you everyone for watching today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.